The last time I did one of these videos, I left it to you guys to decide what band you think I should talk about next. And while in that poll, 40% voted for Deathspell Omega, the thing that surprised me the most is that Nother Tongues got second place. And I would say out of the four selections, Nother Tongues is easily the most obscure, showcasing to me that the people who do know this project are highly fascinated with it, along with the fact too that every time I do one of these videos, I'm always requested to do one on Nother Tongues. So I figured now is a better time than ever to do so. And all I gotta say after re-listening to the whole catalog of this project is it's going to make you feel less of a human being and it's definitely going to increase the emotional and mental damage that you already had before listening to it. For those who aren't aware, Nother Tongues is an experimental one-man black metal project from the Netherlands. And everything about this project, from the mixing and mastering, production, songwriting, and even album artwork, is all done by Maurice de Jong. But for the sake of this video, I'll just call him Maurice, as that's his stage name for the project. Maurice started this project in 2004, and its original name was Dimlit Hate Cellar. But in 2005, he changed the name to what we know as it now being Gnaw Their Tongues. The origins for the name of this project stems from the Book of Revelations, passage 1610-11, and it goes, The fifth angel, who poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. When it comes to the conversation of the discography of Nother Tongues, a lot of people will point out at face value just the sheer size of it, that there's over 50 releases in the Nother Tongues discography, meaning that roughly around three releases per year was the norm for this project. That information becomes all the more mind-boggling when you take into account all of the other bands and projects that Maurice was and still is simultaneously active with while still being with Gnaw Their Tongues, most of which he does all by himself, such as Golden Ashes, Grand Celestial Nightmare, Paraphlegathen, Cloak of Altering, and my personal favorite of the bunch, De Magia Vietrum. Just so you're aware, I'm only scratching the surface of the bands and projects that he is active with. I only announced all the bands and projects that I keep up with that I know he's in, but I think in grand total he's, as of right now, active with like a dozen or so bands or projects, and I'm also not including all the bands and projects that he used to be active with that he isn't a part of anymore, nor am I including supposedly all the bands and projects that he's active with, that he's an anonymous member to. Just simply put, Maurice is a machine that hasn't lost a, a smidge of energy when it comes to his musical creativity. It's just on a yearly basis, expect this man from what he is a part of to release at least half a dozen releases without even breaking a sweat per year. Realizing all of this, a lot of people tend to wonder how Maurice has all the time, energy, resources, and even inspiration to create all of this music. And I feel like there's a few key factors that lead to it. One being the fact that in a 2015 interview that Nother Tongues did for Vice, they talked about more of his personal life. One being the fact that he works from home as a web designer and all the music that he creates is all from his own leisure time at his own studio home, showcasing the fact that he has a lot of accessibility and flexibility when it comes to creating music. And another key factor that he talked about in a 2021 interview that he did for Blessed Altar is that they talked about some of the things that he enjoyed about extreme metal, most particularly in the 80s and 90s, mainly because around that time, bands, at least in the black metal sense, weren't so heavily focused on being these perfectionists. It was an era that there was a lot of naivety to how they were creating music. It wasn't so much like everyone was a perfectionist when it came to releasing music. 
people just were kind of like lost in the intensity and chaos of extreme metal during that time. And Maurice is very fond of that era. And I feel like him being personally attached with that, he brings over that attitude with gnaw their tongues. Thus, he doesn't have this perfectionist mindset. Plus, keep in mind that Gnaw Their Tongues is a project that's mainly known for, yes, implementing black metal elements, but the standout features about it that I think make it unique is everything that isn't black metal. One being the fact that he plays a lot with power electronic music. And if you know anything about power electronic musicians or the, just its music itself, You'll notice that a lot of noise artists tend to have discographies that are massive in the dozens and even some in the hundreds. And I think that has to do with the fact that it's just making noise. It's really on impulse, the idea of power electronics and having a lot of improvisation when creating music. And while No Other Tongues does have, again, black metal elements, the main potatoes of what you're going to hear are the power electronic portions. Maurice has made that approach very clear from the beginnings for Gnaw Their Tongues all the way back in 2006 with the debut full length album being Spit At Me and Wreak Havoc On My Flesh. All I gotta say is to anyone who is willing to check this album out to get their feet wet in the Gnaw Their Tongues catalog, uh, prepare yourself because either you're going to dislike this album and if that's the case don't even bother checking anything else by Gnaw Their Tongues because it doesn't get any easier or more accessible from here or you might find fascination with this album the first handful of minutes and if that's the case prepare yourself to go down a rabbit hole of a lot of different sounds, textures, and experimentations in music because Everything that Nother Tongues does, I feel like is in vain to either frighten you, disturb you, or leave you in discomfort. Because honestly, nothing that Nother Tongues has ever done from the stuff I'm going to talk about in this video and everything else uh, that I'm not going to talk about because, come on, the discography goes for over 50 releases. I can't talk about everything, each individual one, but everything in it there's nothing about it that's going to have a melody. There's nothing about it that's going to be catchy or fun to listen to. It's not anything you're going to bop your head and snap your fingers with. It's just very disturbing music that's all about tension, atmosphere, build-up. And the reason why Maurice has all this fascination with it is with every interview that I've read that Maurice has done, and everyone always asks him, with the humble beginnings of Gnother Tongues, what was your mindset, what were your influences, what were this and that, every single one he answers with the fact that he wasn't in the best mental state when he started this project, mainly because he had such a distaste for humanity itself. It's very misanthropic, the attitude of the first handful of years for Gnother Tongues, or who am I kidding, just everything by Gnother Tongues is very misanthropic, but especially the first five years or so, it's really where it's the most, honestly, just overall fucked up sounding. As for the inspirations for Gnaw Their Tongues, Maurice actually utilizes a lot. It's not just one particular thing that is the driving force of inspiration for this project. For example, yes, as I stated, Maurice's mental state when starting Gnaw Their Tongues is definitely the driving force when it comes to the attitude and presentation of it, his strong distaste for the world and having this misanthropic viewpoint on humanity, yes, sets the tone for Gnaw Their Tongues, but as for the musical aspect of it, it's a lot of things. For example, in an interview he did for the Subterraneo webzine, he talks about that some of his inspirations were Throbbing Gristle along with Necromantia, which makes a lot of sense when you consider the fact that Everything you're hearing in terms of the quote-unquote riffs and Gnaw Their Tongues is all bass guitar. And just like Necromantia, it's all the same, which definitely showcases an influence there. But then there's the experimental aspect of Gnaw Their Tongues, which clearly he takes a lot of influence from Throbbing Gristle. As I would say the debut full-length album right here is basically a black metal version of any throbbing gristle album you can think of. So if you ever wondered what that combination sounds like, check this out. 
And in another interview that Maurice did for a French web scene called Lee Subscribe to Rock, he talks about, again, more inspiration that he takes. One being the fact that he has a lot of fascination with movie soundtracks, most particularly horror soundtracks. And the whole playbook with that experience is that it doesn't have to do, again, so much with melodies and hooks and something that, uh, you know, gets your head bopping but more so to do with the fact that it engulfs you in some type of tension or atmosphere that's very unsettling. And just like anything you'll hear in the Northern Tongues discography, it sounds like something that comes out of a horror movie type of uh, experience. Hence why people tend to wonder if Maurice takes any influence from the Silent Hill video games, but he has no interest or even really any knowledge of it to begin with. And out of everything in their Northern Tongues discography that perfectly embodies that horror movie score soundtrack type of uh, execution, then I would point you to the 2011 full-length album that's in the French language, so bear with me with this pronunciation, being La Vivée de Lanterne Mort d'Enfant, which I apologize to everyone who speaks French because I probably butchered that, but I feel like I need to at least attempt to pronounce it for this video, and it roughly translates to The Arrival of Dull Triumphant Death. One surprising fact about this album is that it was co-released by Candlelight Records, which is very left field for them when you consider all the bands and artists that have been on the Candlelight roster. For something like Northern Tongues, this is quite the oddball, but what's interesting about this release is while it does have, I guess, the abrasive atmosphere you would find with black metal, there's really nothing at all metal about it. It's just a soundtrack. It utilizes almost elements of death industrial. There's a lot of usage of dark ambience on here. And it's meant more in this kind of like theatrical way for Northern Tongues, which is just, again, even for the standards of this project, just odd, but really fascinating how much Maurice pushes himself with his own inspirations here, and it showcases that he's not just this, you know, kind of like mad scientist pulling plugs and switching wires with like the noise aspect of Northern Tongues, but he can kind of conduct, you know, horror movie soundtracks in a way that's very abrasive and unsettling. So for anyone who's looking for more of this kind of like orchestrated type of effect with Northern Tongues, uh, definitely check this out. But for those watching wanting the most black metal fueled release in the Northern Tongues catalog, you don't care how abrasive, how abstract, or how much he experiments with it, showcase to me Northern Tongues at the most metal and black metal focus, then I would point you to the 2007 second full-length album in the catalog for Northern Tongues being Reeking, Pained, and Shuddering. This album was my introduction to Northern Tongues, and with the song Nihilism, Tied Up and Burning, as I just stated, it's really the most black metal-fueled album in the catalog you'll hear, so a lot more usage of blast beats, the riffs that you'll hear are all done by a bass guitar, which again resembles the execution and style of Necromantia, only it's just a lot more perverse, abrasive, distorted, and, you know, again, abstract sounding, that it's more like a deep fried version of Necromantia is the best way to put this album in short. And it would be quite a long time until Maurice would return this style an approach to Northern Tongues with more of like that vicious black metal sound. Not until almost 10 years later with albums like Genocidal Majesty and everything that preceded this album, where you're hearing Northern Tongues become more black metal focused. It's a lot more vicious, and while it still has that abrasive, noisy approach, black metal starts to become the meat and potatoes of the writing style for it. But with all of that discussed, I truly feel like the main reason why Northern Tongues gets the most amount of attention is because it's individuals searching for themes and ideas and subject matters being brought up on a normal basis that are all very taboo, intense, or disturbing in nature being normalized in the catalog of this project. For example, there's the EP release called Ize Sigawa, which is all about the serial killer in Japan who cannibalized his victim 
And what's crazy about it is if you search up the individual's name, not only do you get a biography of the serial killer, but you also get the release that no other tongues did of this individual because Maurice is the only one insane enough to do so. And then there's also the release called Devotion that has a track called Cannibalist, which is an audio track of an individual talking to another individual how he's trying to sell him a human eyeball on the black market. And I feel like it's because of this ultra-realistic, gritty, and savage nature of topics that Maurice does with Gnaw Their Tongues that it's, as to why Dragged Into Sunlight was interested to do a collaboration with him with their album Envy that they released back in 2015. Or the album from 2008, An Epiphanic Vomiting of Blood. I know such a wonderful album title that just, again, looking at the album artwork, which again, Maurice all designed himself, it just looks very discomforting. It looks like something out of a snuff film, which I know I've always joked around that Nother Tongues makes music for snuff films, but I mean, come on, just look at this album artwork and actually listen to the album itself. Again, a mixture of noise, dark ambience, and industrial, all kind of twisted and turned in a way to just give off such a nightmare fuel. It's just a very bleak, depressing and intense album that just feels like a slow burn is just picking away at your sanity minute by minute. And for those who want the next level of intensity similar to this album, I would recommend the 2011 full-length album titled That, however you pronounce it because it's in Latin, I can't begin to pronounce the first syllable of this album title. But everything I just stated about the previous album, it's just intensified tenfolded onto this album. The ambience just feels denser. The percussions feel all the more, you know, intense and just monstrous sounding. And the vibe of this has like this occultish atmosphere that just really engulfs you in this just really sanity draining way. Just everything about this album just feels soul derailing, but you feel in a very unfamiliar territory that I don't know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Axis of Perdition, but just, I don't know, trying to create more of a realistic sense of it without it being so heavily influenced in a fictional world like Axis of Perdition. Just, uh, honestly, if you're really trying to drain out your sanity, and again, it's not really so much metal, but more in this dark ambient noise approach, this album might appeal to you. Then of course there is the fan favorite which is considered to be the pinnacle of anything released under the Nother Tongue's name, what I consider to be the magnum opus and what even Maurice himself considers to be the most complete and best output he ever did for Nother Tongues, which of course I am talking about all the dread magnificence of perversity. This is an album that I've talked about a handful of times already on my channel my top 25 all-time favorite black metal albums list, and most recently with the most disturbing albums that I know. And I always talk about it in the sense that it's an album that's really meant to test your durability with music, honestly. It runs for 62 minutes long, and it's just everything you're aware of hearing in the Nother Tongues catalog done in the most intense and perverse and really nightmare-inducing ways possible with elements of black metal, doom metal, dark ambience, industrial, drone, power electronics, in any which way you can experiment with music to make it sound disturbing and intense and unwelcoming, Maurice does it to the fullest extent on it. And yeah, I've always stated that it sounds like it's something made for a snuff film. It sounds like you're in someone's torture chamber and they're just trying to destroy you in any which way possible, whether it be mentally emotionally, or even physically. And one might wonder as to why people would go out of their way to listen to an album like this, or really listen to anything Nother Tongues does. And I feel like in art, you need expression of all kinds for it to be legitimate art. If it's just this one-sided approach, if black metal was always just, you know, I don't know, 
Satanism, hating God, and violence and blood guts gore and all the other cliches in black metal while still maintaining you know the true and tried black metal approach it really starts becoming unique and when you have projects again like Nother Tongues come into the fold here it makes it unique within itself but it keeps the style of music fresh and exciting I feel like and that's what Nother Tongues does it pushes boundaries in ways that you don't really think of in music, whether it be in the perverse and disturbing sense or just really testing the sanity of someone's uh, capability of creating music, I feel like that's what makes this project very unique in its own right. It really does push boundaries. I don't know what other thing out there sounds like No Other Tongues, and I feel like that's why he has this kind of like cult-like following because they're so interested in just the unorthodox nature of just everything to do with it. As for the future of Not Their Tongues, in most interviews, Maurice has asked this question. He's always left the interviewer with an empty response considering that he really doesn't know if there will be a future. Having this idea that he does things on impulse in this improv sense. But even in most recent interviews that he did, one for Invisible Oranges with the questions brought up, he talks about always taking breaks or having more of like this hiatus uh, with Nother Tongues. And to be honest, when you look at the discography of Nother Tongues and you see everything that he's a part of in terms of the other bands and projects, you're really going to start to wonder when does the well kind of dry up for Nother Tongues? How many more releases can he do for it? And I feel like having over 50 releases in the discography already to date, it's like, I find it difficult to get bored of it if you're always looking for more of that approach with Nother Tongues. There's really nothing of a shortage of material to check out. Even diehard fans of Nother Tongues have yet to really listen to each individual thing that Maurice has done with the project. So, to be honest, and I'm saying this as a fan, I feel like I've we, as just the uh, listeners of No Other Tongues, have really gotten our full uh, experience with the project. And if he continues on with it, so be it. I'd love to hear more material. But really, I don't think there's really anything more he can do with this uh, project of No Other Tongues. But at the same time, maybe he might prove me wrong and get back into the fold with it and make all new nightmares for us to indulge in. But that'll do it for this video, guys. Really curious to know what you think of Nother Tongues and what band you would like to see next that I do in this explaining series. Other than that, like always, links we provide to everything I talked about in the description below, most of which you can see on their Nother Tongues Bandcamp. And that'll do it. So like always, guys, make sure you guys drink plenty of water to stay hydrated and have a great day.